United Kingdom are about to complete the biggest trial of a four-day work week ever undertaken anywhere in the world. This program's thesis was a provocative one. Over six months, these companies would reduce their workers' hours by 20% to 32 hours a week, but continue to pay them 100% of their pay. Charlotte Lockhart, the founder of the Four Day Week, the organization behind the pilot program, says company leaders usually have a visceral reaction when they hear the idea of cutting hours without cutting pay. Something like, that'll never work in my business, that'll never work in my industry, that'll never work in my country, that'll never work in the world. wonder why. Fortunately, she found 73 companies to give it a shot. They include financial firms, recruiters, consultants, healthcare companies, and even a fish and chip shop. This is Britain after all. And while the data on the study has, hasn't been released yet, the anecdotal feedback from these firms appears to be positive. Fully 86% said they will likely continue the four-day workweek policy. The same pay for less time at work. Sign us up. This is literally... This is closer to socialism. That is closer to socialism even though it's obviously not being done at the behest of like workers getting together and being able to uh, seize the means of production. But the impact of that is closer. Like the outcome of that is closer to fucking socialism than like anything else. Way closer to socialism than uh, the, the uh, guy, the CEO guy who's like, I'm going to give everybody 70 grand or some shit. Okay. Damn price. What is this? Uh, humane corps like Unilever are 100% behind that. People hum. What the fuck is this? The cons of a four-day work week? Four-day work week is a system of working where employees or students have their shifts over four days rather than the usual five. These are extremely well... They, they are extremely wealthy as a consequence of running their businesses, but then their business is a bunch of normal men and women who don't inspire. Wait, what? Not to play corporal shill, but there's so much corporate interplay and dependency that is usually very difficult to make large scale changes because you need everyone up and down the industry chain on board. Can't be just one company doing it. <sighs> anyway, I work 36 hours a week to get paid for 40 and I will not work four days a week. It is so, so nice. I'm on a I'm on such a grind that I ask to work six days a week and receive 32 hours of pay that week because I'm built different. I mean, at the heart of capitalism lies a contradiction, okay? A contradiction in the interests of those who are wage laborers, i.e. the working class, against... Uh, the interests of managers and bosses or managers working at the behest of bosses, i.e. capital owners, i.e. the bourgeois, the bourgeoisie. Okay? Now, the contradiction is simple. And any of you that, is, that have ever worked a job knows this already. You have literally lived it. You're probably living it right now. What is that? You as a worker want to work the least amount of hours for the most amount of pay. That's just normal. Right? You want that. That's a totally normal thing to want. And your bosses want you to work the most amount of hours that they can make you work for the least amount of pay that they can get away with. Now, unfortunately, this, this is the simplest way to describe it. It's the simplest way to describe capitalism, okay? And yet, because the bosses, the capital owners, are able to take are able to basically pay you whatever they fucking wish to pay you as a consequence of market conditions. And uh, that always means that they will underpay you. They will underpay you in the form of profits. They will take more from you working at that company so they can line up their own profits and line up the pockets of their shareholders. Okay. You don't really get to have a say in, in this circumstance. So, Less hours for the same amount of pay is unironically something that can be achieved. It might even increase productivity. 
20th century milestones on the path of the 40-hour work week here in 1914. Henry Ford shifts from the nine-hour to eight-hour days, uh, though employees still work six days a week. Congress passes in 1918 the Adamson Act, named after William Adamson, a U.S. representative from Georgia, establishing an eight-hour workday for all interstate rail workers to avoid a strike. Okay. 1924 to 26, Ford moves to a five-day work week, closing his factories on the weekends. He believed that if workers had more leisure time, they would buy more products, including his cars. Uh, while uh, Henry Ford was a fascist and a major anti-Semite and kind of, uh, you know, like, you know, sh said shit about the Jews that would make Hitler go, okay, you know, calm down a little bit, okay? You're, you're being very crazy right now. Um... Ultimately, uh, ultimately, he also recognized alienation. This is to combat alienation. This is to ensure a, a fundamental principle that Americans have even forgotten about, uh, especially the global market, that like your workers should be able to fucking buy the shit that they're making. Okay? Anyway, in 1938, President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt signs the Fair Labor Standards Act, which mandates a federal standard for a 44-hour work week. Sounds like communism to me. Okay. Uh, and the law also requires a minimum wage and overtime pay for those working more than 44 hours a week. And in 1940, the FLSA is updated to lower the federal standard to 40 hours a week. Reducing working hours is pro-worker. Four days a week is nothing like that. It's a con. The link I shared shows it. Um, I don't know enough about the four-day uh, four work week and who's advocating for it. Uh, it. But if, yeah, Unilever is pushing for it, then it's probably a fucking bullshit. <sighs> anyway. Anytime there is a way to get the same workforce to do more work, capital owners will take it, okay? Because we do not have a worker-first attitude when it comes to the economy. No one thinks about it from the perspective of, like, how do we make it easier for workers? When we look at technological achievements that make it so that every individual worker can now do the, uh, the work of 10... Okay, we do not see that as a way to reduce the workers' workload and pay them the same amount. We see that as a way to reduce the number of workers because now one guy can do the work of 10. That is at the heart of why people fear automation, why people fear AI. Automation is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But under capitalism... Automation just means more displaced workers and less workers doing the job of more workers that used to do it rather than uh, alleviating some of the fucking stress and the workload because profit-driven companies would much rather, you know, make one guy do the job of 10. That's it. Seven cons of a four-day work week. Assume benefits of a four-day work week may be more fantasy than reality. Wait, what? Morale boosted from the four-day work week may be short-lived. What is this? This is written like fucking... The article that you sent me literally looks like corporate propaganda, for the record. Like, you just sent me the most, like... You said Unilever is on board with this, and then you literally sent me a, a, a corporate propaganda against it. They're straight up saying gender inequality, inequity might arise. Like, what the fuck? Now, I don't know enough 
I'll be honest with you. I don't know enough about who's pushing for the four day work week and how the four day work week might work. So, uh, for that reason, I'm not going to immediately jump, uh, and say, this is good. But, uh, that website that you linked, uh, stating that it's actually a bad idea is bad. No, more productivity, less sick days, less environmental costs, etc. Wait, what? From the f moment the five-day week was adopted as an industry standard about a century ago, we've been talking about spending less time at work. We already talked about it. Uh, John Maynard Keynes uh, declared early in the 1930s that technological advancement would bring the work week down to 15 hours within a century. Yeah, big, uh, big dub uh, for him, you know. A U.S. Senate subcommittee doubled down on this in 1965, predicting we would only be working 14 hours by the year 2000, huh? It's just so strange that these guys made these predictions, and yet we could do that. They are right. We could. We could do that. That is 100% true, except, like I said, time and time again, all of that extra productivity was folded into uh, a, a decreasing workforce rather than making it easier for the pre-existing workforce to, to do less for the same pay. But over the last few years, the idea of shortening the work week has been given new impetus by the pandemic, which threw workplaces into a state of disarray. That created a unique opening for reformers like Charlotte Lockhart. The opportunity we have here is completely to reframe the workplace. To get companies on board, she's using the holy grail of increased productivity as a lure. That's a particularly tantalizing incitement, enticement for companies in the UK where productivity has languished for more than a decade and where she says workers are on average productive for just three hours a day. This is true, by the way. That's the other thing. Like, if you've ever worked at a, unless you're working in an Amazon distribution facility, okay, where there's like something strapped to your goddamn chest that basically fucking counts every second you spend pissing, okay, and every second that you're you're walking away from uh, the packages to go to the fucking bathroom in this goddamn stadium sized distribution facility, um, most people in especially uh, white collar jobs are working like one hour to two hours a day maximum. Okay, you're maxing out. You can reduce your uh, daily work regimen to like one to two hours of like super productive work. And then the rest is just like fucking around watching the Hasanabi broadcast, which there's nothing wrong with, by the way. You should keep doing that. The data produced by these studies tends to be a little squishy. There are not a lot of hard numbers in them that allow readers to gauge productivity gains or loss in material terms. Uh, that allow readers to gauge productivity in, in material terms, but managers of workers are generally reported being equally or more productive in a shortened week. They reported improved health and perception, uh, uh, general well-being, reduced stress, reduced burnout. One big finding was that people who work fewer hours in a week tend to get more sleep, which almost everyone in the scientific community agrees is key to productivity. There it is. Laura Gurge, a professor in behavioral science who studies well-being at Oxford and the London School of Economics, says happier, better rested workers are likely to be more productive and less likely to burn out or churn out. And a shortened week can drive productivity in other ways. It forces people to prioritize better and really focus on completing their core work. She knows that companies often waste resources by keeping employees idle between meetings and tasks. These idle hours not only fragment employees' attention and therefore productivity, but can also cost companies $100 billion in lost wages. They're using capitalism terms to describe that capitalism and endless profit-seeking when profit rates have a tendency to decline is causing diminishing returns in your workforce because you're just exhausting them to a degree where their output is not going to be the same. A shorter week can also go a long way to dealing with one of the biggest impairments to corporate productivity. Employees taking time off to go to the doctor or recover from an illness. Yeah, it's literally killing you. Biggest impairment to corporate productivity, by the way. This line in and of itself is so violent. I see this almost as a recognition from capital owners and those who side with capital owners 
uh, that the the uh, contradictions are are making it so that like it's hurting the bottom line. Capitalism is so capitalists do so much capitalism that it hurts capitalism. Okay, that's the best way to put it. George quotes research done in the U.S. estimating that five to eight percent of annual healthcare costs are associated with and may be attributable to workplace stressors such as long hours. That's crazy. Less is more. Very people do any very few people do any work after five hours in my opinion. Yeah, I mean there are also uh, you know, more uh physical labor and shit like that that requires your constant attention. Um obviously that's different. But this is like we're talking about, you know, white collar work, not blue collar work for the most part. Ah. <sighs> Anyway, one size doesn't fit all. Her caution was reflected in a small and very random poll conducted by NPR in the streets of London recently. All British workers we spoke to said they liked the idea of more time off, but they all expressed doubts that the four-day workweek model would fit easily within their sectors because they're cucks. They also raised the question of whether a week with fewer working hours would benefit the kind of workers who make up increasingly large part of the British workforce. We talk about the difference between the knowledge economy and the platform and gig economies, Terry says. Work is precarious, and generally people lack security and are self-employed in most instances. They're tied to a company, but technically work for themselves. Here lies, here lies the, the true problem. The service industry, gig sector, or, or gig economy uh, jobs are becoming the only jobs that are available. Okay. They're becoming the only fucking growing sector. And that is literally how they mine sulfur, okay? You go to, the, uh, you go to like the Indonesian sulfur mine, that's the gig economy at play, okay? They're, They're literally, literally doing, doing that. that. Capitalism is so good at, or not so good, but like it's so, it's such a fucking unstoppable behemoth that... The exploitation, the insane exploitation that uh, you see in the third world, okay, has now been brought back to the United States and Western uh, nations that are supposed to be firmly within the labor aristocracy, okay? They are supposed to be more comfortable workers. You understand? Of course, you're against the four-day work week. You work seven days a week. I work for myself, though, so it's different. I lack, I have so much autonomy. I like very little alienation from my labor, okay? I get adequately compensated. I have more of a negotiation power as being like one of the top, as being one of the top uh, people in the industry that I'm in, okay? That's the difference. I work... I work for as long as I want, whenever I want. One of the things I think about all the time is the freedom to be able to stop working if I don't want to. Like, that's huge, okay? Adequately, wouldn't you say you get paid a little too much? Brother, I don't get paid from Amazon. You understand that, right? I get paid by you, and Amazon chooses to take a percentage of that. Like, you are a subscriber, which implies... You are giving me the money, you fucking idiot. And it's free too. It's quite literally free. But because there are so many people that choose to pay, okay, it's just a question, law, I don't complain. No, I mean, you're, you're being snide and misunderstanding the point I'm making and derailing the conversation. You get it? But because of the hours that I put in and because of the number of people that watch, I am able to, to uh, get paid boatloads of money, okay? Which also offers me 
uh, uh, more of a negotiation power when I talk to a company like Amazon. Anyway. For me, I could literally stop if I wanted to and and you know reduce my uh reduce my hours and that freedom that freedom is what gives me so much mental security and and mental health like it it improves my mental health dramatically as opposed to uh not having that freedom as opposed to never being able to uh, leave and and having to fucking go to work every morning at the same time that's a huge burden lifted from your shoulders you get it uh a real pro worker stance will be reducing working hours on those five damn days not cramming 10 hours per day to shave off one day in the name of corporation saving money over it no i think that i think that the real uh pro worker movement in this circumstance would be a worker backed movement to you know, push for legislation that changes dramatically the the work week to eight hours, four days a week, rather than eight hours, five days a week. That's it. And then ultimately push it even further and, and lower it even further. Okay. That's it. Well, did you just say Twitch improves your mental health? Do you not remember when you got the shingles? Yeah, I mean, yes, yes, yes. I do work. I do, I do things that are not good for my mental health. I'm just saying that the autonomy, even in that circumstance, is what keeps me sane and alive. Okay? If I was being forced by the threat of not being able to have health care anymore... To stream these hours, I would have fucking killed myself. Okay. To a certain degree, I choose to stream the uh, as much as I do. Do you get it? There isn't some. There isn't some corporate overlord looking over my shoulder saying, "Like, look, if you don't do this, you're fucked." I enjoy what I do. Even though sometimes chatters try to make it as hard as possible. You know? Yeah, it's better than the alternative. I've gotten shingles from my old job and had zero choice in staying or quitting because I prefer not to be homeless. Exactly. The violence... The structural violence of poverty is what makes people stay in the fucking jobs that they're in. And in a country like America where healthcare is private, okay, in a country where, reading script, what? In a country where America where healthcare is also tied to your employment, you're, you have additional stress factors that force you into staying at your place of work no matter how bad things get. And that is by design. That is not an accident, okay? That is by design. Anyway. It's like people do enjoy uh, doing their hobby or passion, which is technically a luxury now. Yeah. Um, because work is supposed to be gruesome or because work is gruesome and grueling for so many people in the working class, many people literally look to what I do and say, that's not work, Omega lol. Even if I am quite literally filling a stadium worth of people every day and entertaining them to a certain degree, okay, for eight to 10 hours a day, Okay, which is 
very valuable to companies, no matter which way you cut it. But because I enjoy it and because I have so many freedoms, people look at that and go, that's not work, dog. Like, that's not. And I'm not ever going to sit here and say, oh, man, my life is so hard. It's not. Okay. Yeah, I have issues, certainly. Okay. Yes, there are a lot of issues in this situation, but it's nothing in comparison to people that experience all of the stresses and significantly more for way less pay. Okay. For way less pay. And they have no other alternatives, they have no other outcomes. What I always advocate for is for every worker to be able to have the same level of autonomy and emotional fulfillment from their own labor. That's what I want. Use your position to help the non-millionaires. The fuck do you think I'm doing, dumbass? The fuck? What do you think this argument is about? God damn it. I hate when like fucking gifted subbers are, are who have been in the community for a minute. are just like too stupid to recognize that. What are you doing? 